In this video we will continue our exploration of iterations and we're going to add a bit of trigonometry to create spirals. But before that I'm going to set up the scene from scratch one more time. So we're going to go here and uh, create a primitive and I'm going to drag the primitive in here. Then I'm going to create a matrix operator. I'm going to put it here and do the connections. There we go. And we have our cube. Let's make it into a sphere and set it to icosahedron. And uh, let's set the lines and let's make it 12, just because. Now the next thing we need to do is compose a few things. So I'm going to compose a matrix. So compose matrix. Put this in here. Then I'm going to compose a vector 3D and put it in here. And now we have our independent values. And we're going to use a range. So range in flow control and a multiply. So multiply. And we're going to put the range in the multiply, the multiply in the x. And we're going to make this 20. Fantastic. Now nothing seems to be happening. And that is because my multiplier is set to 0, 200 per step, and there you go. So make sure you look at what you have, and uh, if you're creating new nodes, make sure that your default numbers are correct. Fantastic. So let's go and do the first part of a spiral using a sine trigonometry. Yeah, don't be afraid. Trigonometry is your best friend. So if you go here and you type C, I'm going to put a sign and the trigonometry is going to come up. And uh, usually you have an oscillation uh, coming out for the sign uh, when numbers go from 0 to 1. And then that oscillation repeats. So let's begin, first of all, by putting this range and the output in the multiplier. And you can see what we're getting here is an horizontal oscillation. Now, it may not seem that way, but that's how it is. So the spheres are going like that, like that, like, like that, and just oscillating left and right. Now, let's go and add the counterpart to the sine, which is basically the cosine, and we're going to feed that into the y. Copy these, copy paste. Let's go down here, put this in the y, select this, change it into a cosine, and use the same range. Now we have a donut. Now, if I go to the range here, you will see that we sort of get a weird circle that's wrapping around. And that's because the values are not normalized. And that's a, a very good time to show you how you can do that. There are many ways, but the easiest is to use a range mapper. So, C, range, mapper. So, I'm going to feed the value in here. And this is going to map from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. So, it's a linear mapping right now. So nothing's going to change when I change these two inputs. But if I have, let's say, 200 of these spheres, and I go here and set the input max to 200, what this is going to do, it's going to take all the numbers from 0 to 200, which is basically this range, and it's going to map them to 0 to 1. The one little detail here is that we don't want the numbers to be 0 to 1. We actually want them to be from minus pi which is 3.142 and some change, and all the way to pi. So now we have a full circle. Let me make these smaller. Let me change my display. And we have this beautiful little donut circle that's made up of any number of these clones. Look at that. I'm making a nice little arc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make more than one wrap of this. And the next thing is I'm going to actually add some Z values here. So it moves like a spiral. So again, I'm going to use my multiply. Let me make a copy of this. Let me get my range from here. Let me put it in the Z. And let me make this smaller. And now we have a spiral. So a spiral distribution using a couple of bits of trigonometry, a range mapper to arrange how many of these spirals we're going to have, because this is where we control the number of these spirals. And then we have these numbers, which control the actual x and y scale. And we have this that controls the depth of our spiral. In order to perfect our setup, let's go and add a few things. 
So first of all, I'm going to go to the range mapper. And remember that this input max needs, ideally, to be aligned with uh, the count, the number of clones. So I'm going to take the count and put it as an input max. And uh, now the output min and output max are basically how many units of rotation. What is the angle we're actually spinning around? And uh, unfortunately, these are now calculated in radians for whatever reason. Let's not get into the details. I want these to be in degrees. So I can set this to 0 and this to 90 and have a 90 degree helix. So all I need to do is click here and create a node which is called an angular unit. If you type radian or degree here, and drag the angular unit. This allows you to do a conversion from radians to degrees or the other way around. I'm going to go from degrees to radians so that the value I'm going to use is going to be degrees and it's going to make the translation and output radians. So let's put this in the output min, make a copy, put this in the output max and set this to zero and set this, let's say, to 360. And now if I go to this view, you'll see it makes a whole circle. Or if I make this 180, it's going to make half a circle. Or if I go 3,600, it's going to make 10 spins. Excellent. So now everything is in place. Everything looks fabulous. And I'm going to show you one of the amazing advantages of the node system inside Cinema 4D. So here we have our clone. Here we have the matrix, which makes the copies. And everything else calculates all those matrices and feeds them in here. I want to put this mess a bit in order. And to do that, you select everything you need to compound into one group and right click and say group nodes. Now we have this group that contains everything. If I click on this little folder, I can go inside and you will see that everything looks the same except for the last output that's been output to result. Now what you can do here is double click and call this matrix because that's what it exports. Go to the scene level and if we zoom out here, you will see that this looks like any normal node other than the little icon of the folder over here. Now what I can do is instead of diving in to change any of these parameters, what I can do is propagate these so that they are visible when I select the node and they will be visible in the Attributes Manager. We are going to do some attribute propagation. How to do that? Well, let's go to the range, and we know that the end is our count. So just drag it out in the wild and release your mouse, and just click on Propagate Port. This will create a propagation bar, and if I double-click and call this Count and press Enter, now back to the scene nodes, you will see that this value now has been added to a new tab called Inputs and I can go and change the values from here. Fantastic. So let me go back in and add as many as I can. Let's go and say I want this to be the start angle. And you don't have to drag them on the bar. You can drag them anywhere. Let's go here and call this end angle. Excellent. What else do we have here? We have the scaling, so this is the X scaling. So I'm going to drag this here and call this X scale. And this one here, propagate it, and that's the Y scale. And lastly, this is the Z scale. Z scale. And now if I go up here, you will see that everything is available to me. So, for your homework, go and create an amazing setup, and then make it into a group, and then just uh, enjoy having fun with it. The way we use these groups is that I can go and make a copy into a new scene. Here's a brand new scene. I can paste it, and then I can grab a primitive. Let's get an oil tank. It has some geometry here. I don't want the geometry, so I'm going to add geometry up. We're going to talk about this later. I'm just making it a bit more complicated for you. I'm going to add a matrix operator. Put this here, add this here. So there you go. We have oil tank. And then I'm going to get this and make many oil tanks in a spiral distribution. How about that? 
the last little tip, you can always right click on any of these inputs and edit the port. And you can change things about the interface and so forth, but we're not gonna get into this quite yet.